Welcome to Wadsworth History on Film, a program presented by the Wadsworth Area Historical Society and designed to record the oral history of Wadsworth for posterity. I'm Cesar Carino, your host, and we have two guests today. We have Minnie Early, whom everyone knows. She's been around for years and years and years. And Helen Mills, and I know that you have a last name other than Trice. Mills. Trice. Helen Mills and I go back in high school, way back, oh, probably 50 years or better. Um, we were in the same class, and Levi was in a class with us as well. Your brother Levi. Yes. Why, what was his real name? Guy Mills Jr. Guy Mills Jr. Why did we call him Levi? Because he used to say, Levi, carry the ball. Ed Bates tells the story about when he was living down there, uh, probably in uh, South Wadsworth somewhere, they had a, a football game. Now, Ed would probably be 10 years older than Levi, and, and therefore Levi was a little kid. Yes. Okay, Levi's no longer a little kid, but, but Levi was a little kid at that time, and um, Ed um, said that when the bigger boys, you know, the ones who were at that time 15 or 16, were playing football, uh, Guy Mills Jr. would come down there and he would say, Levi, carry the ball. And I think yes. that's one of We're delighted that both of you are here. And many of you go back uh, more than uh, 50, 60 years, don't you? Oh, I, uh, 1937. 1937. But what about uh, how many years old you are, many? July the 26th, I was 82. 82 years. Yes. So God bless you. You look great. Thank you. And your health is good. And you were Bill Early's wife. And yes. Bill was a friend of everybody's in Wadsworth. And Bill is gone, isn't he? Yes, he is. How long did he leave? How, how long did he die? How ago did he die? Around 12 years ago. 12 years ago. Yes. Bill used to be the driver for the Ohio Match. Yes. And I think that the um, the CEOs of the Ohio Match used to to ask him how to run things because he had more more of an ear of the people in the Ohio Match than anybody else in the whole world. And uh, what a wonderful person he was. I remember him well uh, 40, 50, 60 years ago um, when um, he was around town and uh, very active and all of that. Um, tell us about your family. Who are they and uh, where did you come from and how did you get to Wadsworth and all of those kinds of things, Minnie? Well, I was born in Greens, uh, Greens County, Alabama. In Alabama? Alabama, yes. And uh, it was nine, of, nine children. Nine children. And I'm the fourth one. The fourth one down. Yes. What was your maiden name? Minnie Louise. Bird. Bird, B -Y -R -D. B -Y -R -D, yes. And, and how did you get to Wadsworth, Minnie? Well, it's kind of a long story. I was working for, for a couple at, and, at home, and my aunt lived in Akron, Ohio. So at the age of 16, she sent for me, and she got me a job. Where did you get a job there, then? And uh, living on the job. The family was named Mrs. Co Mr. and Mrs. Quine. Quine. Uh -huh. In Akron? In Akron. Now there's a Jane Quine. Would she have been a daughter at the time? Jane no. would be about 80 years old. Well, they now. only had two sons. They had two sons. I see. Well, now wait a second. Jane would not have been a Quine. She married a Quine. Oh. And what, was, the, what was his name? I can't I remember his name. Can't remember his it's name, but I'll, so because a quiet is not a very popular name. That's right. Now, did you and Bill have children? Oh, yes. And how many, and we, where are they? Well, uh, my oldest son, his, his, his name is uh, William David Early. William David Early. And he lives in Roxville, Maryland. How old is William David Early? He's about 58. 58, wow. And, and he has a son and a daughter. The son is Aaron David Early, and the daughter is Tracy Jean Early. Uh huh. And my second son is, his name is uh, Robert Ennis Early, and he's married. He, he lives here in Wadsworth. Oh. On Stratford Avenue. On Stratford Avenue. Mm -hmm. he's and what does he do here in Wadsworth? He, he don't work in Wadsworth. He works in Rickman. He's the head chemist at the Morton Salt. He's the head chemist at Morton Salt. Yes. Isn't that wonderful? Uh, where did he go to school? Bluffton College. Bluffton College. And my oldest son went to Bluffton College also. 
Both of them went to Bluffton College. Yes. And what does your oldest son do? Older son do? He's a uh, mathematician. Mm -hmm. And where does he work? He worked, well, some of his work is out of his home office. Out of his home office. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then you have other children too. And Richard Early, he lives in Toledo, Ohio. Mm -hmm. And what does Richard do? Well, he's a, a business manager for the city of Toledo. He's the business manager? Yes. They all have good jobs, don't they? <laughs> and uh, they have two children, Christopher Early and the daughter Catherine Early. And they both, now my oldest grand, the second grandson, he, uh, he won the scholarship to Austin, Texas. For, they're giving him uh, a scholarship for his master's degree. He did quite well. And then Catherine, they gave her a scholarship to Bennett College mm -hmm. in Greensboro, North Carolina. North Carolina, right. It's a mm -hmm. very famous college in Greensboro. Now, those are, that's the extent of your, your family, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, what a proud mother you must be for all of those, those kids. Well, and um, it was a difficult task rearing them. We're going to be talking about the plight of blacks in Wadsworth uh, in a couple of minutes, but we have to find out a little bit more about um, Helen's family, too. <laughs> Helen, you, you got married uh, probably 19, what, 48 or 49? 48. 48. No, not 40. I was, I was still in high school. I didn't get married until... 1953, somewhere. Oh, really? I thought that you got married earlier than that. Okay. No, no, no. 1953. So you've been married for at least uh, a good 45 years, haven't right. you? Right. 40, uh, Correct. 42 years, 43, something of this nature. Now, um, who did you marry? James Trice. James? James Raymond Trice. Trice. And tell us about your family. Uh, James Trice, he was from the Henderson, Tennessee, my husband. And I met him at a bar in Akron. A bar in Akron. <laughs> <laughs> but it wasn't a low class bar. But anyways, we was there, and they always had dances. And then uh, I have two children. And one name is James um, William Trice, Jr. And I have a daughter named I Helen Irene Trice. Just like you. Just like my, yeah, she looks like me. And both of them have achieved, uh, achieved very well in high school. Sure they would. Very good grades. My son was very good. And then he graduated from Wadsworth High School. My daughter graduated from uh, Book to High, I mean, Garfield High School, cosmetologist. Mm -hmm. How old are the kids? Uh, my son's 43 and my daughter is 37. Right. Now, Helen, you come from a family of a long-standing family in Wadsworth. Probably not the very first black family in Wadsworth, but they've been here for many, many years. Uh, your grandfather, or your father, was whom? Uh, Guy Mills. Guy Mills. Yes. And did he, was his father here too? No, he came from uh, Louisville, Kentucky. Came from Louisville, Kentucky. What did your father do? My father worked on WPA, I forgot what it stood for, here in Wadsworth. That's Wadsworth, uh, that's the Works Public Administration. Okay, he worked for WPA, and he also worked for Richard Bird Coal Yard, and he helped Hope Coal to survive for his family. To where? He worked for two jobs, so at he could provide time, he for support his a family. family. Right. He also worked at the brickyard too, didn't yes, he? Yes, he did. He did work at the brickyard that in was the late life. 30s and the, and the 40s. Uh, we had Pat Brannigan here, who was the um, so the vice president of the brickyard, and he talked so affectionately of your father. I knew your father when he worked at the brickyard, okay. and my father during a strike in 1940. Uh, well, it wasn't a strike actually; it was 1941 when the um, company for which he worked, which was the Ohio Brass in, in Barberton, refused to do uh, war work, they closed the factory down. So he had to go find a job. And he went down to the brickyard and he worked with your father, uh, enjoyed him immensely. Uh, your father was a very religious man, wasn't he? Yes, he was. And tell us about, about your father and how religious he was and what he did and things of this nature. My father was very religious. He was a Methodist. Mm -hmm. And he did not go to church, but he made sure that the, his family went to church. And how many in your family, Helen? There was 15 all total. 15. Start they raised the 10. <laughs> Pardon me? They raised 10. 10. And what, what about the other five? The other five died at birth. Oh. 
That's too bad. Starting at the top of the ones we're living, the, the, uh, tell us, um, start, George is the oldest, right? No, Richard was the oldest. Oh, I'm sorry, Richard was the oldest. Richard was the oldest. And what, is, what did Richard do in life? Richard was a research chemist at um, Republic Steel in Cleveland. All right. He went to Case Western Reserve. He went to pre-medication, pre-med school right. at Western Reserve. And then he went over to uh, Republic Steel and worked as a research chemist. A research chemist, but Dr. Richard, he had a doctor's degree, did he not? Part of it, not all of it. I thought that he had achieved the he doctor's just, degree. No, he just had pre-med. Pre I see. Pre now then, who was the second one? The second one was George Wills, and he worked uh, cutting lawns so he could go to college. That's how he got his education, was cutting lawns here in, in Wadsworth. And then he went to Kent State University, he got a master's degree. And they went on to Cleveland Public Schools, he worked as part-time teacher, and then he achieved and became a principal of two high schools. And then when he built John F. Kennedy High School, he was the main principal. He was the main school. principal. He was very highly regarded at John yes, F. Was. Kennedy High School. Third in line was? Third in line was Phoebe Mills. Phoebe. And she worked for the OPA, which was a, a government. Office of, Office of Price Administration. Yeah, the, and, and Phoebe uh, was graduated in 1940. So she'd be 75 years old now, right? Correct. Okay. And then she went on to work from there, and then she decided she want, didn't want that job, so she went to be a cook for one of the prominent restaurants in Cleveland. Okay. And then she, she retired. She got sick, so she quit working. And she had two children. Now, uh, let's go back to uh, George. George is not living anymore. No, he's not. And uh, Richard is not living anymore. Correct. Uh, Phoebe is still alive. Yes, she is. And then who was fourth? The next one in line was my sister, Catherine. Catherine. And uh, she didn't finish school. And she passed. And then the next one in line was Levi. Levi. Levi carried the ball. <laughs> and he went to several colleges and he has a degree in mental retardation. In and mental retardation. Had, and he retired. What did Levi do in California that was ex extremely yes. different? Tell us about Levi's life in California. His life in California, he met a doctor when he was going to school. It was very hard. And so the doctor helped him to achieve the school. So then they found a job for him in this mental retardation uh, school. And that's where he taught, was mental retarded people. And didn't Levi buy a golf course? He, well, I wasn't going to bring that party. <coughs> Excuse me. Yes, he bought a shares in uh, Anita golf course. Anita racetrack, he has shares in that also. <laughs> Levi has made it big. Yes, yeah. When we have our class reunions, if Levi can't come, he sends a picture for each of himself to each of the classmates. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you, I have every one of them, and I revere them with, uh, with, uh, with, with affection. Then following Levi, we had... Helen. Helen. <laughs> That's me. That's you. That's right. I graduated from Wilders High School. And I worked on domestic work in order to survive because at that time the blacks weren't needing jobs here for us. So I black women especially. Black women yeah. especially. Black men had to fight their way through paper bags to get to where they had to go, but by golly, black women just didn't have any opportunities at None all. None whatsoever, except for domestic work. And then I worked for the Feelys here in Wadsworth with Wayne Young, the owner of Ohio Injector, Ohio Match Company. I worked for him. And then I moved up to the Feelys. He was the vice president of the salt company. Right. Uh, Mrs. Feely's still living. Is she, I don't know. Oh, is she? No, no, wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry. No, no, she is not living. She had, they had a daughter, uh, Anna Mae Feely. Anna Mae. And Donald was a... Donald Feely and Anna Mae Feely. And uh, Anna Mae married um, uh, Dr. Cleary. Frank Cleary. Correct. Right. And um, Donald married whom? I forgot who he married. But they lived, they were just a wonderful family here yes. in Wadsworth, the Feelys. Um, who else then? Who followed you? Well, after that was my sister Estella. She followed me. Mm -hmm. And uh, she graduated also from Wadsworth High School. She did domestic work until she, one day she decided she wanted to do something different. So she left Wadsworth and went to Dayton. And she started out in the stores. And then she went to Patterson Wright Field. And she was a um, technician. Wright Patterson. Wright Patterson Field. She and was a technician. She paid all the big accounts for the big bombers and et cetera. Mm -hmm. Ah, wow. Now we go down to number six. Who was that? Number six was um, Joe. And he worked for, I don't know, it was one of the uh, plasters in a while. Carino, it wasn't Carino. But anyway, he worked Carino for plasters. Carino didn't have plasters. <laughs> there was one here in Wadsworth. I can't think of his name. He worked for him. He taught him the trade. 
And then he decided he didn't want to do that, so he went into body. Okay. And then he became body managers of different shops. Mm -hmm. and then following him? Was Wilbur, and he's still in Wadsworth. He just got construction work, and he worked for Brogan's mm -hmm. and any other construction company. And down from that? And down that was my sister Lydia. She didn't finish school, she lives in Akron. And then? She, that's the end. <laughs> that's, that's 10? Yeah, that's we got 10. through 10 in a hurry. <laughs> The blacks came to Wadsworth. Why? Why did they come to Wadsworth? What brought them to Wadsworth? Well, I think they uh, came from Virginia, what I understand. And they settled here in Wadsworth to start a new life. And what kinds of work did they have to do? What kinds of work? Domestic. Domestic? Coal mines? Coal mines. And things like that. As a matter of fact, there's a story that says that they were brought into Wadsworth to work in the coal mines because people were. Uh, there was a strike or something like that. Who were some of the first blacks in Wadsworth? Do we know those names? I know the Williams family, which is part of my family, my mother's family. Your mother's family is one of the first families here. And when did they come? Do you, do you know? I don't how? remember. Mm -hmm. I should have looked it up because we have one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what about the, um, what were the names of the, of the main families in Wadsworth, say for instance 50 years ago or 60 years ago? Helen, you can probably remember all of them, because there are only about 13 or 14 families in Wadsworth, is that right? Correct. Who were they? What were the family names? Uh, one was the Greens. Greens? Greens family, uh, the Mills family, the Rivers family, the Larkins family, the Early family. I think I left out some. The Taylors. Like, the Taylors, Taylors and McDonald and uh, Jones. And uh, Thomas. 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 And, and Watson. Watkins. Watson. And the Earlys. Not in the early uh, dances. I mean. Dances. Mm -hmm. And anybody else? Yeah. Galbraiths? No, they came later. They came later. OK. But the early families were the ones that you just mentioned. Yes. And where did they live? The early family lived on um, Walnut Street. And the rest of them lived up in, around this area on um, Mill Street. Mill Street. Mm -hmm. Now. <clears throat> Mill and Kyle. Mill and Kyle. I was on city council, oh, 25 years ago or so, and I was talking to the chief of police at that time, who I think it might have been Rob Bloney, or not really positive, whether it was either he or um, Bernie Ty. And he said that there were 13 families, black families in Wadsworth, and with the exception of one boy who had a minor infraction, they never had a police problem with any of them. Now that's really saying that's something, isn't it? Yeah. They were wonderful, wonderful people. Now, they all belong to about the same church. Is that correct? That's correct. Now, what church was that? First Baptist. Where is that located? On Mill Street. How many? How old is the First Baptist Church? 117 years old. 117 years old. <laughs> Do we know anything at all about the first minister of the First Baptist Church? The first minister of the First Baptist Church was my grandfather. Your grandfather. <laughs> Reverend Leroy Woolrich. <laughs> Who was it? Reverend Leroy Woolrich. Reverend we, Leroy Woolridge, your grandfather. Yes. Now, how was he related? How, did, how was he your grandfather? My, grand, my grandfather was related to my mother. That was my mother's grandfather. He, my mother was adopted, and he raised her. And he was the minister? Yes. But he, did he live in Wadsworth? I think he I don't remember where he did. In that. My understanding is that he probably lived in Akron, and then he came to Wadsworth mm -hmm. from time to time. How many families are, were there in the, uh, the Baptist Church on Mill Street? Uh, when it first started, how many people? The, I, how many people does it hold right now? Before they the families right now in First Baptist, mm -hmm. there's about six families still there. How many? It's about six families. Six families. Mm -hmm. um, the church burned not too long ago, wasn't it? Yes. How many years ago did that church burn? About seven many? years ago. Seven years ago, and you rebuilt it. Yes. Oh yes. But before it was built, how many people would it hold? Do you think? 150. 150. And did you ever have 150 in there? Oh, yes, yeah. plus. <laughs> Despite the fact that there are only six families who still belong there, according to what you just said, Helen, uh, they have a full crowd all the time. Now, who's the minister there right now? Reverend Rufus Thompson. Reverend Rufus Thompson. And uh, we were going to have Reverend Thompson here with us today, were we not? Was, was he going to come with you? I wasn't asked to bring him. I I'm quite sure he would have came. Oh, he would have come. I thought that he was the one who was going to come with us. But nonetheless, 
Does Ruf, does does Reverend Thompson live in, in Wadsworth? Right? No, he does. He lives in, in Akron. Worcester. Oh, in Worcester. Oh, yes. I didn't realize that. I thought he lived in Akron. He lived in Worcester. Tell us some of the problems that the blacks had in the city of Wadsworth when you were growing up. Um, since you're 84, 82? 82, 80, yes. 82 years old. Mm -hmm. Uh, you can probably remember some of these as well as Helen, or uh, maybe even better than Helen, but what kinds of problems did you have? Now, uh, we just heard you say that your family is all educated, and they all have very fine jobs. We've talked about um, the Mills family, and the ministers there, and the teachers, and the um, um, research chemists, and, and all of these other people. That wasn't the way it always was, was it? No. Tell us how it was. Well. The young people, as they grew up, there wasn't any jobs for them. Not at all. Not at all. Why? Where would where would they have to look for a job? The city, uh, either the factories, and uh, when they worked at the factories, there was janitors. Always a custodial kind Always of. Always custodian work. Now, do you remember any particular discrimination that you felt or, or had many when you were growing up? Yes, because uh, a lot of us wanted to work at the mat shop, but they hired me because uh, I did the janitorial work, the matron up at the match, and for 15 years. You did that? Yes. I didn't mind it because I, it was the only thing we could do. I worked domestic work. What would you have preferred to do had you had an opportunity? To go to school and be a, a, a nurse. A nurse. I knew that, that you were going to say that. Because <laughs> that's what you always wanted to be, a nurse. I worked in, in Wadsworth Ritman Hospital for 15 years. And what did you do there? I was housekeeping. And housekeeping? Yes. But you wanted to be a nurse. Yes, I did. Now, how, how was it? How, I know that the feeling had to be absolutely devastating not to be able to do what other people were permitted to do. Um, how did you overcome that? How did you work that out here in Wadsworth? And Wadsworth wasn't the worst place in the world for this kind of thing, but it, oh, it was here. How did you work it out? With prayer. With prayer? And, and with the job that was offered me. Mm -hmm. And you uh, just kept that up? Yes. Mm -hmm. Helen, when you were a young girl, uh, you lived on Mill Street. Yes, Kyle yeah. Street. Pardon? Kyle Street. On Kyle Street, well, right next to, to Mill right. there. Now, um, you walked to school every single morning. Yes, I did. Because you lived only about two blocks from yes. school. You went to Central School. Yes. For first grade, all the way through 12th. No, I went to Franklin School. Oh, you went to Franklin? Franklin School first. Mm -hmm. oh, so grade, to, and then I came to uh, junior high. Junior high. I then you had to walk all the way down to Franklin School. No, we moved from Carl Street to Main Street, down oh. to South End. Okay, in other words, you had you were living down there. Where did you live on Main Street down there? Uh, right there at the depot, behind the depot. Oh, behind the depot? Well, there was only one lot there and one house, and that's where we lived at. And where, where was that house still there? No, they tore it down. They tore the house down. So you went to Franklin School. Um, were there any other blacks in Franklin School at the time? Oh, yes. Who? Uh, the Larkins. Larkins there, girls. Joanna early, Larkins. Joanna Larkins, some of the earlies. Which earlies? And uh, Minnie's children. <laughs> Oh, your children, okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Joan Galbert. Yeah, and Joan Baird. Joan Baird. Mm -hmm. And some of the Purdue children. And um, that would and be uh, Lillian Purdue and her yes. Purdue's children. Yes. Uh, when did those people come to town, her Purdue and his wife, Lillian? Uh, Lillian was raised in a while. Because I left she that is a what? A Foley. She's a Foley. I left Lillian that family Foley. out. Mm -hmm. And she was also um, for 75 years old now, isn't she? Yes. She was yes. born in uh, 1922. She just had a birthday. Right. Uh, she just now had a birthday, and then she, might be, she might be 70, 75, 75, 75 right now. 75. She's born 1922. Um, Lillian and um, uh, the Galbraiths, uh, not the or Joan Beard. John Beard. And then she had a brother. Joan Beard had a brother, too. Yes, Jerry. Jerry Beard. And uh, Mr. and Mrs. Beard were also domestics. Is that right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Wonderful people. I knew them very well That's years ago. I knew them very well. They're just wonderful people. Mm -hmm. They used to clean Alan Hartzell. Right. Yes. And uh, I was working next door at the B&B store, and they would come in, and we just had the nicest talks. And they're just uh, such good people all the way through. And of course, Joni and I went to school together for okay. at Watson High School, and she was an outstanding person as well. Beautiful singing voice. My yes. heavens, she could sing. And she was very bright, too. Um, <clears throat> do you remember any kinds of um, 
ill feelings that uh, occurred against you as a young girl uh, going to Franklin School and then probably going to the high school? Well, um, there was prejudice there, but basically the children, we all got along. Regardless of our race or what status we were in, we got along fine. But we knew prejudice was, going, was there for us when we reached the plateau of graduation. But as far as going through high school, I have no qualms. I, I can see why. We got good basic education here in Wadsworth. In other words, you're saying that the Wadsworth schools didn't discriminate at all. No, they did not. Mm -hmm. Now that's and great to know. We didn't go to Lincoln, we didn't go to Centralized because we lived in this area. Right. There wasn't any blacks in those other schools, but Franklin and Wadsworth High, I have no qualms. About there was a black in the other school, the Rivers family, at Centralized. Well, that was later in life, I think. 1937. Is that when we started? I remember that very distinctly. I was in the second grade, and Linton Rivers, the oldest of the Rivers boys, yes. that's of Jim Rivers' oh, children, yes, I forgot. was going to be coming into school. And the superintendent, who was Vernon V. Oshman at the time, went to all of the classrooms, particularly to the younger classrooms where Linton was going to be coming in, and said, we're going to get up a, a colored boy. At that time, we called uh, blacks colored, a colored boy. <clears throat> And for two weeks, we all practiced how to be nice to this colored boy because we had never seen one before. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, I was um, somewhat delighted because um, uh, that took the pressure off me since our family and another Italian family were the only ones ever to go to Wadsworth Centralized School at, uh, up until that time. And uh, we were kind of a curiosity, too. So when Linton came, he was more of a curiosity and that took the pressure off me. And I remember thinking that to myself. Anyway, Linton came, and the teacher uh, made us all, uh, uh, her name was H. Uh, May Vining. She said, now this is Linton Rivers, and uh, Linton uh, is uh, a very fine boy, and he lives, I forgot where he lived at the time, I think they might have lived at the Brickyard, I'm not it's sure. Brickyard. Right. They lived at the Brickyard, and um, he's going to be our friend, and we all accepted him, and that's the way it was throughout the entire school. Then Jim Rivers came. Uh, a little bit later on. And I must tell you a story about Jim Rivers and his children. He has two children, as you well know, Jim. Uh, one is Socrates, and the other one is Demetria, Dimitri. And they were named after the Greek doctors who delivered them. Uh, Gwen Rivers, who's now a consul, consul woman at large, which is the first black in Wadsworth ever to, well, no, Jim was the first black ever to become a council person. Then when, after that, when Jim was no longer permitted by his school system to, uh, to do that. When our kids were young and his kids were young, this is like three or four years of age, they came down to visit us because we have always been good friends with Jim Rivers and, and Gwen. Our kids had never seen black children before, never. And because um, we didn't really go to, uh, very much, and there weren't any in Wadsworth. They were there the entire after the evening, the entire evening. Now remember, their names were Demetrius and Socrates. Socrates. Now they call them John and Sock, but that was Demetrius and Socrates. When they left, I said to my two older children who were speaking at the time, the youngest one couldn't speak very well, I was only about two years old. Mm -hmm. I said, did you notice anything different about those children? And my oldest son, my older son, think, 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 think. They have funny names. <laughs> <laughs> that was the only thing that they saw different. They had funny, funny names. names. Well, uh, the story that goes beyond that, that our son Jerry and Sock, or rather, and uh, uh, John, became very good friends. As a matter of fact, John was in Jerry's wedding. Uh, and um, that, that friendship still, still continues. And of course, our friendship with uh, Gwen and uh, Jim still continue. Uh, Jim was the first black to go to Bluffton School, the Bluffton College. Is that correct? No. Who was? My, my son. Oh, is he older than Jim? He isn't older, but uh, Jim. Jim went, to, Jim went to Bluffton School in 1950, 51, 52, 53. Well, my boy, my, Bill was there. Bill. Bill was there my at the time? My son was there. But the reason uh, Jim didn't go right away because he, he was working at the injector 
saving up his money to go oh, to college. Oh, I see. Okay. 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 But so my son was there already. He's younger than Jim, but Jim went right. a little bit later. Jim is right. 60 years old now. Mm -hmm. Right. I see. Well, uh, that makes a lot of sense, and I'm glad you, you straightened that out for me. Um, but the, he went to Bluffton School, too, and he became a principal in the Barberton City Schools. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If we were to take a, um, a, a survey of all of the kinds of jobs that the blacks in Wadsworth have, we probably would come up with maybe a dozen or so out of the 13 families. At least one or two people in every single one of the families has turned out to be an outstanding uh, administrator or scientist or um, in one way or another has excelled. And that says a great deal for the, the, the wonderful people that, that all of you had to work so hard to do. Let's get back a minute, Minnie, just to um, your days in um, Alabama and then coming to Wadsworth in 1937, which of course was uh, 60 years ago, if you remember, well, like to, 60 years ago, it's a long time. Uh, how were things in Alabama compared to Wadsworth for, for blacks at the time? Well, one thing about Alabama, the blacks own their own plantations, their own land. And we, and we had our own land, so we didn't have to come in contact with anyone. But there was a lot of them sharecropped. So when sharecrop means when the crop was over, they would have to divide it. But we didn't have to do that. Mm -hmm. In other words, you had your own land. Own land, everything. And so you never knew whites at all until you came to Akron, is that right? Oh, I did, because did I you? worked in a white family. Oh, that's right, in, in Alabama. Alabama, yes. I see, okay. We knew them, mm -hmm. but we didn't have any, any trouble with them in anything because we had our own. You had your own land. Yes. And then when you came to Wadsworth, what was the difference? Huh? Did you notice any difference at all? No difference at all. They were segregated there, they were segregated here. There was segregation all over the place. In Akron. Mm -hmm. So uh, it, it wasn't too much, it wasn't much difference. No, no, no. Because when, the way I see it, I thought I was coming to heaven. Really? And it was not heaven here, huh? It wasn't heaven. It wasn't here. heaven. <laughs> but it wasn't hell either, was it? No. no. Mm -hmm. Because I worked in a beautiful family. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, they treated you well and all of that? Yes. That's great. Then after so, some years, I met my husband, William. But the funniest thing, I wasn't, it, it wasn't my intention to get married so soon. It obviously was Bill's intention to get married, wasn't it? <laughs> because I was getting ready to go to Chicago. Mm -hmm. To do what? With my aunt, we was going to work in uh, this big home for two uh, cooks are cleaning well, as a team, but I met my husband. And that took care of that? And that just took care of that. That took care of that. Helen, you moved to the house by the depot. Yes. <laughs> why didn't you move to Highland Heights? Highland Heights, why didn't I? Because they would not allow black people to move to Highland Heights. Where were you permitted to learn to leave, to live? Just where we went. <laughs> we lived down uh, around Central Wadsworth, like Mill Street, Kyle Street, and the South End. That's where the blacks lived, mostly. And uh, was there a law against it, or how did you know? Well, there was just discriminatory. If you would apply for something, I'm sorry, we do not let blacks live in this. You're not qualified. You always, you're not qualified. You don't have enough money. And this is how they. You, they just didn't come out and say, well, you're black, but we knew. That's a little bit strange that you don't have enough money. When, when we talked to Levi at your brother's funeral, uh, he has an endowed scholarship fund for poor blacks because he has made it very, very well in finance, has he not? Yes, he did. Mm -hmm. And he, he has enough money to give away, and that's wonderful, and we're yes. so pleased with that. And now, uh, I wonder if he thinks about the days when you were permitted to... Uh, yes, he does. He talks about it. And well, how, how does he feel about it? He said, well, the opportunity wasn't there, but God opened a way for us to do better. And, and he said, I made up my mind to do better. And he did. And keep moving on until I do. And that's what he states to his family and to all the young people. He said, just do what you can do. Just do it. That's his right. word is, just do it. When uh, Levi was in high school, he learned to play the trumpet. 
Yes, he did. Oh. And he blew that trumpet as if it were, you know, the horns of Gabriel. Yes. <laughs> and he was a tremendously good football player, as you well know. Yes. As a matter of fact, he could throw a pass. Uh, the the uh, the ball was so uh, so uh, straight that uh, it looked like a bullet. Yes. And he was good, but he wanted to play the horn. Yes. And he wanted to go to college, and he did all of those things. Yes, he did. Uh, despite the fact that um, there were times in high school when he probably didn't apply himself to his fullest. Exactly. Even in college. <laughs> Nor in college. But he did it, and he did it very well, and then he learned to, to, to uh, work with uh, the uh, disabled children, and he did yes, a beautiful did. job there. Yes, wonderful. One of the things that um, um, I think is extremely important for us to know here is the interrelationship among the families of the black families in Wadsworth. Um, when we were in high school, we had a black girl who uh, was not permitted to go to the prom because we couldn't have anybody from the outside except people in the senior class and the junior class. It was a closed prom. You remember the closed proms? Yes. And Harriet Crable, a wonderful, wonderful teacher, was our class advisor. And she went to the superintendent and said, we have a black girl who wants to go to the prom and there are no black boys. She, she didn't say may she, she said she is going to bring a date from outside the, outside the school. And she did. And we, were all, we all applauded it. We were in the, in the auditorium when that news came. Uh, Mrs. Crable took us downstairs uh, to the auditorium. We had a meeting for something probably, uh, for the prom or whatever, and she announced that. And every single person, every single person applauded because it was a dumb rule. I mean, now, in today's world, maybe a black girl and a white boy could go together, but in those days, that didn't happen. Yes. It just right. didn't happen. Yeah. So she brought her own, her own date, and we were pleased with that. As a result of 13 families living here and not being having that kind of uh, intercult intercultural relationship uh, marriage-wise, uh, who married whom among the blacks here in Wadsworth? Well, my brother George married Ramona um, Green. Ramona Green, and she was a uh, not a cousin, or she's the, not related, but she was a choice that he had to make, right? Yes, they were neighbors. They were neighbors, and he made that choice. And they lived together for a long, long time. They were together. Over 50 years. A wonderful uh, marriage. Uh, who were some of the other people who married each other? Mm, I can't think of anyone else. George Galbraith and uh, Johnny Beard. 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 They married. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, Joan Galbraith, or rather, um, George came later on in life, though, didn't he? Oh, yes. He didn't. He was not one of the original ones. No, he that, wasn't. Yeah. No, no. Uh, he worked for the city of Wadsworth. Yes. And uh, Joni was, uh, as I say, a very bright person with, a, with an outstanding future with that voice of hers and everything else. Um, what about some of the other ones? Can we remember any of the other ones who had intermarried or did they have to go outside the community to marry? Most of them went outside the community. Well, my, my, son, my oldest son married a, a girl from Greensboro, North Carolina, Georgine. And they met, this is the funniest thing, when, when Bill graduated, they, he graduated and uh, they sent him to Dahlgren, Virginia as a mathematician for the Navy. And, and two years later, Georgine came to the same uh, station to, to work. Then they met there. And uh, they added two and two and made a. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they were both mathematicians. Mm -hmm. And Bob, of course, he was a bachelor for quite a long time. And then he married uh, a girl from Worcester. Uh, Sally from, I forget her last name anyway, but Richard spent three years in Vietnam after he graduated from Toledo U. Oh. He, he won a scholarship for years. And he was in Vietnam for three years? And he, after he graduated, he was a, a dental, te dental technician and they sent him to Vietnam for three years. We're going to run out of time. Let's ask a couple more questions here. So I'm going to ask two questions. One, I'm going to ask to Helen, 
And the other one I'm going to ask you, Minnie, because you probably might have, might have a, a, a good idea about this for no reason other than the fact that you're, you're older. Helen, tell us who the blacks were in Wadsworth when you were growing up and where they lived. I mean, we know the Larkins lived on Walnut, right? The Larkins lived water, on, a, a water on Water Street. Street. A water Street. Where in Water Street? Uh, 180. 183, right on the corner, 206 Water Street, right 206. on the corner of Water and East. Water and East. And, and who were their neighbors? Their neighbors were most Italian people, Italian people. people. And I was and a neighbor. And Minnie too. Early was a neighbor. And who? Minnie Early. Oh, Minnie Early was a neighbor, and right. And Rose Pollard, she lived uh, Rose. East. Rose Pollard. She was an older person. Now, I don't know Rose Pollard. She's real ancient. She's real old. You probably wouldn't remember her. And those was right there. And the Cloyds, they lived on the Water Street. They had all lived in Water Street. And that was the extent of Water Street. And then we had the Howards and the Earlies and the Purdue on Walnut Street. On Walnut Street. Howards, Earlies, and Purdue. Purdue's. And Herb Purdue was an auto mechanic. Yes. His, um, his motto was, don't, call, don't cuss, call us. Correct. And um, Lillian Purdue worked with the schools for many, many years. Yes. She was a Lillian Foley. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. And where did the Foley's live? We lived on Walnut Street. And the Lillian Foley's. lived in, their, in her mother and father's home on Wander Street. Now, Lillian had brothers and sisters, didn't she? Yes. And who were they? Uh, Warren Foley, Catherine Foley, and B. Foley. And uh, Lillian is not the oldest, not the youngest. She's in the middle there, isn't yes. she? Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, Mr. and Mrs. Foley are gone, of course. Yes. Uh, they died many, many years ago. Yes. Then, uh, what other streets did we have? Now, you people lived, the, the Mills lived in that house by the depot. Yes. And, and then uh, the Beers lived up on the other extension of Walnut Street. Which extension? Uh, west, the, extension. West, west, uh, west Walnut Street. West Walnut Street. Which, of course, is now where the um, paint factory paint factory is and so forth. Right. They all live back there. The Beers yes. live back there. The Rivers live on State Street. The Mills has had Kyle Street. The Mills now, on, on, Where on State Street did the Mills or did the uh, Rivers live? Down near the city dump. Near the city dump. And the Jackson family lived across the street from. Now the Jacksons were related to the Mills or to the Rivers, aren't they? No, they're not. No. Who's related to the rivers? The Moors. The Moors are related to the rivers, okay. And uh, because Mrs. Moore was a rivers, wasn't she? Yes, she was. Yeah, she's gone now. Right. She died a year or so ago. And the Jacksons, uh, they also came to Central High School when I was there, the Jackson kids. So right. there's, uh, um, there are three, two kids that I remember, but there are more than that, weren't there? There were about seven of them. Seven of them? Mm -hmm. Nice, nice people, nice family. Mm -hmm. So they lived down there. Then where did the other ones live? Uh, the Mills family was on Kyle Street. Now that's your family? Yes. And mm -hmm. the Greens was on Kyle Street. And the Jones family was on Kyle Street. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Moore was on a Mill Street. The Dancys was on Mill Street. The Watsons was on Mill Street. And they all lived in the same one, two, three, uh, uh, right in the dip there, right? Right in the dip. Mm -hmm. And the Taylors. And the Taylors was and on the, Kyle and Street. And uh, tell us about the Taylors and the, the success that he had. <sighs> He Tell was a that. very brilliant man. Oh, yes. And what did he do? Uh, I forgot. He worked at the Barefoot Soul, but he was also a creative a designer. But he was also an inventor, wasn't he? Right. Designer and inventor. Designer and inventor. And He's still living, isn't he? Yes, he is. I saw him not too long ago. He's in a nursing home. Is he? I didn't realize that he was in a nursing home. I saw him when he was actually able to walk. Yes. This was maybe a year or so ago. Mm -hmm. And he still was doing a great deal of experimentation. Yes. Um, he had... Um, uh, a, a very, very fine reputation as an inventor and uh, for the barefoot soul. Um, tell us again about his family. I know nothing very much about the family, except that I was named after his sister, Helen. <laughs> you were named after his sister, Helen? <laughs> well, they were Wadsworth mm -hmm. people, weren't they? Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, tell us a little bit about him as he was growing up, uh, that you remember about him as, as you were growing up. He was a person that was a private person. He always stayed to himself. But he's very, 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 very bright. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How old would he be now? Probably 80-something? Uh, about 82. About your age. Do you remember him at all? Down about 82. Oh, yes, I remember him. He was older than my brother. Mm -hmm. He's about 82 years old. He might, he might even be a little older than he that, Helen, do you think? Uh, what, um, what kinds of things do you remember about him when he was growing up, uh, uh, besides the fact that he was kind of to himself? The only thing I can remember that he was to himself, and he loved cars. He used to tinker with cars. He used to tinker and with cars. And design, redesign cars, you know. That's the only thing I remember about him. Did we have any other blacks in town at all? Was there a black family on Rymer Road many, many years ago? 
I can't remember. I can't either. It's a doctor. Oh, the Dr. Strawbridge. <laughs> oh. Yes, Dr. Strawbridge. Yeah, and right. who was he? He was a physician, I don't know. I think he was a GYN. OBGYN? Mm -hmm. And do you know him? Did you know him? No. 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 Um, did he associate with the other blacks in town? No, he didn't. He wasn't from Wadsworth. No. I think but he, he was, lived. He was from Akron, wasn't he? Yes, he practiced in Akron. And this would have been in the mid-40s, I believe. I think so. And where did he live on Rymer Road, do you know? I don't remember exactly. It's up in that area. He may not have even lived on Rymer Road, but he had lived up in that area. Uh, a wonderful person. Everyone really admired the man. When, uh, when you went to um, uh, elementary school, the two of you, you started elementary school in Alabama, is that correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How, was the, how was the atmosphere there then? For well, we had our own school. So you went to an all-black school? Yes. Mm -hmm. And an all-black principal, and all-black teachers? And right. Everything was black. Mm -hmm. uh, was it a kind of a shock then for you to, uh, to get out of that atmosphere, or did you think this is the way things were? It, it was, it, down there, it was. That's just the way they were. That's the way it was, and all in the churches and everything. We had everything was separately. Then when I came here, I thought everything was going to be together, which it wasn't. And, that, no. and I was very disappointed. Now, as a matter of fact, when I was in the service, uh, one of our good friends was um, Sergeant Edward Randall, now dead. But. Um, we were always together. Uh, we worked together, and we were always together. And we were uh, sent to Washington, D.C. for a, uh, an official function. We went in a military car to Washington, D.C. There were three of us, four of us, uh, three whites and, and Sergeant Randall. Mm -hmm. He was the ranking officer. I was only a corporal at the time. He was the ranking officer. And uh, we had to stop, and this is a little bit embarrassed, we had to go to the bathroom. And. Uh, we stopped at a place, and they wouldn't let him in. That's right. It shocked me tremendously. I couldn't believe that, that they would not let him in. They couldn't, he could not use the bathroom. No, I know. That's Wasn't that right. something? That's just so horrible. Um, the second question I want to ask many is uh, something related to this. Uh, as you have lived a life for 82 years, uh, what do you see as, a, as the significant difference between when you grew up in Alabama and came to, to Ohio in 1937, and here in 1997, which is 60 years later that you came to Wadsworth, ex beside the fact that all three of your boys got a, an equal education, I think those were your words, right? Mm -hmm. And were able to, to um, uh, function equally yes. in the uh, labor force, whereas you had to take domestic work, and yes. your husband had to be uh, the driver. Uh, he could not be uh, anything other than the chauffeur. Mm -hmm. I guess that's what they call the chauffeur mm -hmm. at uh, the match company. Yes. And he was uh, also the mailman. And the mailman, that's yes. right. Mm -hmm. But besides that, what differences are you seeing now the, with the blacks in Wadsworth? Well, they can buy homes wherever they want to now, if they have the, the down payment. If they have the money, I guess. <laughs> well, anyway. Has anyone tried to buy a home, say, for instance, uh, in the north end of town? And has anyone ever been denied that recently? Not recently, no. My son lives on uh, Stratford. And of course, wasn't any, any, he didn't have any struggle in buying that. Now, that's um, the new part of Stratford Avenue, is that yes. right? Mm -hmm. the, the, it's beautifully. Uh, uh, landscaped and mm -hmm. very, very nice. That's where he lives now. Mm -hmm. And he had no difficulty buying it. No. Jim Rivers lives in Barrenwood with uh, but he, Gwen. He was living there. He used to live on uh, Durling. Durling Drive. Yes. Right. But, um, and he didn't have any difficulties in Durling Drive that I remember, did he? No, because we had, um, mm, we had organized uh, and Mr. Looney. Yes, John Looney. Was the head of this organization. And what was the organization, Lily? Equal rights for the blacks. Equal rights for the blacks. John yes. Looney was an activist. He still yes. is an activist. He still is. He lives. Yeah, oh, yes. And he, um, he has fought many battles. Oh, yes. As a matter of fact, he was a very um, prominent person in industry, and he withdrew from that to work with this. Right. So he'll be well remembered, John Looney, yes. L-O-N-E-Y. Yes, he will. 
will long be remembered for what he has done for all people, particularly the blacks. Right. Then Jim and Gwen Rivers went to Barrenwood, and to the best of my knowledge, they had no difficulties buying there. Mm. Barrenwood is a very upscale, yes. uh, nice community in Ward 4. Uh, and that's over on the uh, southwest corner of Wadsworth. Mm -hmm. um, beautiful, beautiful homes, probably upwards of uh, $200,000, I would imagine, don't you think? Somewhere yes. in that area. Mm -hmm. And they, uh, they have lived there, and they, as a yeah. matter of fact, no, no, no. Uh, as I say, she, <laughs> she has been voted in two or three times yes. in city council, and mm -hmm. she does a fine job, as, uh, and we're pleased with that, because it reflects so well on the black community, mm -hmm. and uh, rightfully so. Now, Lily, if you had some wishes of what could have been, you know the old saying that of all sad things of tongue, and, uh, tongue or pen, the saddest are these, what might have been. What would be some of the wishes that you would have had as you were growing up? And then I'm going to ask you the same thing, Helen, so start thinking it fast. You, you mean after I married? Or no, before. I mean, uh, before. things that you wish would have been different for you in your lifetime uh, in terms of black-white. Oh, I, I wanted to go to school. That, that's the one thing that you would have wanted to do, to go to yes. school. What a pity, what a pity, you know, that you could not permit your mind to do what it wanted to do. Yes, that's no. right. Now, there was no way that you could have gone to school, is there? No. Tell us why. Money. And what kept you from getting money? We didn't have a job. No jobs. Do you remember what kind of wage you received when you were domestic? Well, domestic. When you were the domestic? Two ten an hour. Two dollars and ten cents an hour. Did you have Social Security? Later on we did. But not before? Not before. Did you have hospitalization? Later on we did. Later on you did, but not before. No. How long was it before you were permitted to get Social Security and hospitalization, or that you did get Social Security and hospitalization? Well, I Don't, well, my husband was working at the match, and I think, I don't know what year they started hospitalization. Do, do, I, I don't, don't remember what for year. him. I, I think they probably, but Social Security, they started in 1937. Well. But you didn't get any Social Security I did, but my husband did. But you didn't get it as a domestic, right? No. no. <laughs> as a matter of fact, um, the two dollars and ten cents an hour probably didn't come until later, did it? That's right. Uh -huh. What did you forget when you first started working? Dollar and a quarter. Dollar and a quarter. <laughs> Helen, of all sad things through Tonga Pen, the saddest for these what might have been. What would have been what you would have wanted? To education do? would have been my priority. First and foremost, a priority. Education, education. education. If we had every single person here lined up, I bet that would be the very first one. What regrets do you have about the way things were for your life during your period here in Wadsworth? I have no regrets. None. I'm glad I to hear that. I just accepted uh, one day at a time through my growth and development as a child. I accepted because I knew I could not change things as it were. So I just had my mind to go ahead with life and do the best I could. And that's what I did. You thought in your own mind, as a young girl, I can't change anything, right? Yes. Why did you feel that that, that could not be changed? Because I knew that the segregation was there. It had to be a law from the state handed down from the capital to change the law of segregation. And at this point, I knew it could not be changed, so I accept things that was and try to be the best that I could do with what I had. And you surely did do that, didn't you? I worked for the state for 31 years. 31 years you worked for the state. Without a college degree, I went through nursing school and et cetera. And what did you do? I was a therapeutic program worker. Where? I worked at Western Reserve State Hospital. In uh, uh, Northfield? Or? North Sagamore Hills. Sagamore Hills, Northfield area. And what did you do there, Helen? I, uh, my primary job was I worked with forensics. With forensics. With the forensics, and my primary job was to teach them the basics of life, to start life over again. Read, writing, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And the health care and how to prepare themselves to leave the hospital to live on the outside. Right. Now, you, I heard you say, and I knew this for a fact, that you went to nursing school. Through the state. Through the state. And how long did it take you, and when did you do that? 
I went, well, we went in phases. As I first went, I was first two weeks orientation, then we went through PA1, PA2, pharmacology. And over three years, I had to cram it all into my small little You had to cram it all in. How old were you at the time, Helen? When I started the state, I was 23. Yeah, 23. Now, between the two of you, let's identify the um, great things the blacks have done, the, black, the blacks who live in Wadsworth, the great things that they have done uh, over this past uh, 82 years. Who were some of the ones who really excelled? We have three here and some of your children and some of your brothers. And what about uh, uh, Bill's family? Oh, um, his brother, Roy, er, Roy Early. Roy Early. Mm -hmm. And Stanley Early and Reginald Early. Reginald Early. Those are the brothers. Yes, I remember Reginald very well. Mm -hmm. But uh, what about, um, uh, what were some of the things that the blacks and Wadsworth did that really excelled? We know about um, mm -hmm. Taylors. We know about the Mills. We know about the Earlys. Who were some of the other families that excelled? Uh, Bernice Heath. Uh, Bern she married Reggie Early. Right. Those are two that came out a lot and married each other. She was a school teacher in uh, California, and Reggie was a counselor at one of the colleges in California. Right. Reginald's what? A counselor at one of the colleges in California. Reginald Early became a counselor in a college, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, Bernice was a Bernice Heath, a school teacher in school teacher. Principal in college. Mm -hmm. I mean, not California. She was a principal. Yes. Principal in a school. And so, Reginald also went to le electronic school and he got his license to do electrical work. He did, but he yes. was a counselor in a college. Yes, first. Uh -huh. Right? And then Bernice was a principal. Yes. Okay, so we have another family that I excelled. What about some of the other families? Well, the River family, most of them have excelled. Mm -hmm. Yes, they have. They have a couple who were in a ministry. A couple in a ministry, a couple. Uh, the school teachers, yes. etc. And Jim was the principal, the first Jim principal, was the principal. In, first black principal in Barberton. Yes. Mm -hmm. Anybody else excel? They all did, but how did they excel? I think that's what we need to hear. How did they excel? They excel through determination of being somebody. Of being somebody, and they worked hard. That's right. And they have uh, this is their their legacy. Um, can you remember anything else at all that you would like to say? We have a, just a minute or so left. Uh, can you remember anything, anything else that you would like to say about the black community in Wadsworth? Uh, just anything at all? Well, I think the black community in Wadsworth have done um, great. They have excelled in many things. They have their families. They have went on with their life and got better jobs and lived very nicely. Now, how many people live in the same houses where they were about designated to live when, when you are growing up? Uh, about three. No, three. three families. Mm -hmm. And I'm who are those? There. <laughs> you still there because you like it there. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. But families. you could live anywhere you wanted to. Yes. Right? And um, any other ones? Does anyone live on Mill Street? Are there any blacks on Mill Street now? Yes, on the Moors. The Moors? Part of the Rivers family. Part of the Rivers family lives on no Mill Street. No Mills is here. A rich, I mean, I'm, my brother lives on State Street. Your Wilbur. brother, Wilbur, mm -hmm, lives, lives on State Street. Where on State Street? Right near Mill Street, with Mill Street coming okay. to the state right there, Mill, across the Mill Road. Mm -hmm. Mill Road, across Mill the Road. Road. Mm -hmm. Across the street from there, which is a place you could not have lived when you were growing up. Correct. That's correct. That's and that. Amy Damson lives on Rainbow. He lives on Rainbow? In an apartment, yes. Mm -hmm. Amy does. Yes. Now, Amy is a male, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Amy is a male. Uh, he's probably uh, 70 years old now, isn't he? No, he's been, uh, no. about 68. He's 68. a year older than I am. Okay, 68 years old. Mm -hmm. uh, Bill is about 70 then, 71 or 72. Yeah. Bill Dancy. Does Bill Dancy still around? No, I think he deceased. Bill, Bill, young Bill deceased? Both. Mm -hmm. Old Bill and young Bill. What happened? I didn't realize it. I don't know. I think the young, old Bill had a heart attack and uh, young Bill had a kidney problem. Oh, for heaven's mm -hmm. sakes, that's too bad. He was a powerful football player. Yes, oh, yes. Tremendous football player. Yes. He played with Lee Kahn. Uh, Bill graduated in uh, 1944, and they had just a powerhouse of a football Wonderful. program at that time. Mm -hmm. Minnie and Helen, we've come to the end of our hour, and it ended much too soon because there are so many things that we would like to have you talk about yet, but nonetheless, we do have a time restraint and this is it. We want to thank you for coming, for bringing us a, um, 
a beautiful picture of uh, 75 to 80 years of life in the black community in Wadsworth. And the nicest part of it all is that in addition to not ever having any problems with the blacks, they have all excelled and have made us proud, so proud that we someday hope to be, to live up to the expectation that will make the black community in Watson proud of us. Thank you. Thank you again for coming. Thank you for having us.